All right, so we're diving into MongoDB's Q3 2025 earnings today, and we need to figure out why the stock took a hit, even though they beat revenue expectations. We're going to be comparing this quarter to Q2 and Q1 to get the full picture. Yeah, it's really interesting how the company's narrative has been changing over the past few quarters. It's almost like a puzzle where the pieces keep changing shape. Okay, I like that. So puzzle pieces changing narratives. Yeah. Let's start with the headline numbers. Revenue came in at $529 million. That's up 22% year over year and above their guidance. But clearly something spooked investors. Because the stock took a hit after the announcement. What happened? Well, if you think back to Q1 of this year, everyone was talking about macroeconomic headwinds impacting their consumption-based model. Essentially, if companies use the database less, MongoDB makes less money. And they were seeing the slowdown across all their customer segments. Yeah, they were even a little bit down on Atlas, yeah. which is their cloud-based flagship offering. Yeah, yeah. And the growth there was way below their initial forecast for Q1. Exactly. And then in Q2, Atlas consumption was still below target, but they started highlighting their success in winning new business, especially a strong pipeline for Enterprise Advanced, which is their premium product, targeted at larger organizations with more complex needs. So kind of a silver lining there. New customers coming in, potentially offsetting that slower consumption growth. Yeah. But here's where things get interesting. By the time we get to the Q3 earnings call, Macro concerns are barely a whisper. Now the focus shifts dramatically to internal operational improvements and these new initiatives. Hold on. So it went from the economy is making everyone cautious to look at all this cool new stuff we're doing. Precise. And what are those shiny new initiatives? The two big ones are legacy app modernization using AI and positioning MongoDB as the database for the coming wave of AI applications. OK, so are they trying to distract us with AI fireworks while quietly admitting Things aren't as rosy as they initially projected. Well, let's not jump to conclusions just yet. But it is interesting how the narrative has shifted so dramatically. And this leads us to the next piece of the puzzle. Missed financial targets. And some pretty big guidance changes. Okay, let's break that down. They beat revenue expectations for Q3. But you said something about the trimming the full year outlook. Right. Back in Q1, they anticipated their non-Atlas revenue. So that's the revenue they make from products other than Atlas to be slightly down for fiscal 2025. But after Q1 came in with lower than expected contributions from those big multi-year deals. They had to adjust their expectations. Exactly. Now they're forecasting a mid-single digit drop in non-Atlas revenue for the entire year. Hmm. That's not insignificant. So one piece of the puzzle is that their revenue growth might not be as strong as they initially thought. And we can't forget about Q1's slower than usual seasonal improvement. Hmm. Typically, their business sees a bump in Q1, and it just didn't happen as strongly as expected. So they've had to revise their overall growth assumptions. OK, so we've got this narrative shift towards AI and internal improvements, coupled with a less optimistic financial outlook. What else should we be piecing together here? Well, there's another layer to this that's raising some eyebrows. Remember all that talk about new customer wins? Well, there's growing concern about the growth of those newly acquired workloads, especially the ones from fiscal year 2024. So they're adding new customers. Yeah. But those customers aren't necessarily scaling up their usage of MongoDB as quickly as they'd hoped. That seems to be the case. And even management has admitted that their early incentives might have been too focused on volume over quality. Basically, they were rewarding salespeople for bringing in any customer they could get instead of focusing on those with higher growth potential. So are they attracting the right kind of customers, the ones who will stick around and drive significant revenue growth long term? That's the million dollar question. It's one thing to add names to a customer list, but it's quite another to cultivate those customers into high value long term users. Right. OK, so we've got potential revenue concerns, shifting narratives. And now questions about their customer acquisition strategy. What does all this mean for the average investor or anyone following MongoDB? I think the main thing to understand is that while MongoDB is still growing, they're facing some real challenges. It's not all smooth sailing anymore. Right. The market is getting more competitive. The macroeconomic environment is still uncertain. And on top of that, they're making these big bets on AI. But the payoff from those bets might be years down the line. So some red flags here. But I'm also curious about those shiny new initiatives they keep talking about. Is there any substance behind the AI hype? Or is it just smoke and mirrors? Let's dig into that in part two of this deep dive. Let's dig into those new initiatives, especially the AI piece. It's exciting, but also a bit of a question mark. Yeah, every tech company seems to be trying to add some AI magic to their products these days. So is MongoDB's AI play the real deal? 
or are they just following the hype? Well, they're definitely betting big on becoming the go-to database for AI applications. And they do have some good arguments, like their flexible document model, the high performance, seamless integration with AI frameworks, and their run anywhere strategy. So it works on premise and in the cloud. So the technology seems to be there, but you said earlier that the payoff from AI might be years away. Why is that? Because widespread adoption of AI applications at scale is still a ways off. Most companies are really just dipping their toes in the water, experimenting with AI, but not ready to fully commit yet. And even MongoDB themselves said that not many AI apps are hitting that product market fit stage yet. Right. So it's important to remember that their vision for AI is a long-term play. It could be years before they see substantial revenue coming from this. That makes sense. Investors are often looking for quick returns especially in a hot field like AI, so they might be getting impatient with MongoDB's long game. Yeah, and this actually brings us to another interesting development, the CFO's departure. Oh, right. I almost forgot about that bombshell. Yeah, after almost a decade, he's stepping down. It's a big deal, especially considering he led them through their IPO and a period of incredible growth. I mean, we're talking 50 times revenue growth during his tenure. Oh, that's impressive. It is. But now the question is, what does this departure signal about the company's future direction, and who will they choose to replace him? The new CFO could bring a completely different perspective and approach. So another layer of uncertainty is added to the mix. Exactly. Now, while the AI story unfolds and the CFO transition takes place, there's something else that MongoDB is doing that's generating real results right now. Legacy app modernization. Oh, yeah. They've been talking about using AI to help companies move their old relational databases onto MongoDB. Tell me more about that. So they've been running these pilot programs, and the early results are pretty impressive. We're talking over a 50% reduction in modernization costs. That's huge. No wonder big companies are interested, yeah. especially if they're tired of their outdated systems. Exactly. They're all trying to become AI ready. And modernizing their database infrastructure is a key part of that. But this modernization process, it can't be as simple as just flipping a switch. Right. No, you're right. It involves a lot of professional services, which impacts their gross margins in the short term. They're having to invest heavily to make these transitions happen. So it's a trade-off. Sacrificing some short-term profitability for the potential of big long-term gains. Precisely. They seem to be betting that those gains will be worth it. This modernization wave could bring in a ton of new workloads, and as a result, a lot more revenue further down the line. It's like they're laying the groundwork for future growth, even if it's not immediately apparent to everyone. Okay, so we've got the financials, the strategy shifts, the AI gamble, the CFO change, and this legacy modernization push. Anything else we need to think about? Well, we can't forget about the competition. MongoDB isn't operating in a vacuum. Yeah, it's a jungle out there. Uh -huh. There's always rivals, both established players and up and coming challengers, vying for a piece of the database pie. Exactly. And one of the most interesting things happening right now is the rising interest in open source alternatives like Postgres. Oh, yeah. The underdog story. In this case, MongoDB is Goliath. They built their success on an open source foundation, but now they're facing competition from that very model. Interesting. So how are they handling this challenge? They're trying to leverage the power of open source while also differentiating themselves enough to justify their commercial offerings. Sounds like a delicate balancing act. Yeah. So how do they walk that tightrope? How do they stay ahead of the open source folks? and fend off those other competitors. It's all about innovation, constantly adding new features, improving performance, making it easier for developers to build more and more complex applications. It's a harm's race. Yeah, exactly. And they're also focusing on areas where open source solutions sometimes struggle. Things like enterprise grade security and the really good customer support. Right, because those are things that big companies really care about, especially if they're running mission critical applications. They'll pay a premium for that peace of mind knowing their data is safe, and that they can get help quickly if they need it. Exactly. And it's not just about features and support. They've also got these strong relationships with the major cloud providers. AWS, Azure, Google Cloud. Remember their run anywhere strategy? That means they can work across all those different cloud platforms. Which is huge for companies that want flexibility. They can choose the best environment for their needs. 
or even use multiple clouds. Right, and these partnerships give MongoDB access to a ton of potential customers. So it's win-win. Definitely. Okay, so they're innovating. They're emphasizing those enterprise-grade features and support, and they're partnering with the big cloud players. Sounds like they've got a pretty good defense against the competition. It's a good start, but things change so fast in tech. New players pop up all the time. Existing ones are constantly adapting. So MongoDB can't just sit back and relax. No. They need to stay agile and keep a close eye on new trends that could disrupt the market, like serverless computing and the growing demand for multi-cloud solutions. So many things to keep track of. Yeah, if they miss these shifts, they could fall behind. It really is a jungle out there. Yeah. So what do you think? Does MongoDB have what it takes to stay on top? I think they have the potential. They've got a great platform, a talented team, and a solid track record. But it all comes down to execution. Can they deliver on their strategy? Can they anticipate those new trends? Can they adapt to all the changes happening in tech? So it's not a sure thing. Definitely not. This has been a fascinating deep dive. I agree. Thanks for breaking it all down for us. My pleasure. And to everyone listening, until next time, keep learning, <laughs> keep questioning, and keep those insights coming. Closing disclaimer. Thank you for listening to Deep Dive to Earning Calls. Before we wrap up, I want to remind everyone that this podcast is for informational and entertainment purposes only. The insights shared are based on my analysis and supported by advanced AI-generated insights. While I aim to provide accurate and thoughtful commentary, the information shared may not always be complete or free from error. I am not a financial advisor, and this podcast does not constitute financial investment, tax, or legal advice. Always do your own research, consult a licensed professional, and carefully consider your personal financial situation before making any decisions. Investing involves risks, including the potential loss of your principal. Past performance is not indicative of future results. Thanks again for tuning in, and I'll see you in the next episode.